Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. It's Belinda here from Visualize DNZ. A very warm welcome to all those who are joining me for the collaboration with Rachel Bella Crafts. Christmas Craft Off 23 is the collab that we're doing and today is my day. Super excited to bring you a project with this absolutely glorious Christmas kit. It really is stunning. Five different kits are part of it. Uh, this is the title page for the, I guess you'd call it the main part of the kit, the Timeless Christmas Collection. So there's five different kits as part of the series, and I'm using bits from probably most of those, uh, but primarily the Timeless backgrounds and the Timeless shabby backgrounds, and then a page out of this, and maybe other little bits and pieces. I can't actually remember, like there are so many pages absolutely stunning i hope you get a really good feel for it as you watch so that aside um there is a lot of information to give across um everybody's in, a, in the collaboration is going to be in the description box below there's a link tree there that you can go to click that and you'll find all the participants who are bringing you videos uh, there's over 60 people bringing you videos for this collaboration during November. It is huge. And Rachel has done an amazing job scheduling all this, putting it all together, doing this wonderful kit. Uh, so please do head along and support all the participants. Uh, if you can subscribe to the channels, it's going to help each of us so, so much if you can subscribe. But at least leave a like and a comment and there is a giveaway at the end. So you need to watch every video in the collab. Uh, you need to like it and you need to leave a comment, which is really important because that's how we know you've that you've been there. Um, and then you can go in the drawer and there's, at last count, I think there was like 52 or 54 different prizes that you could win. And I imagine by the end of it, there'll be even more. So you really want to be in with a chance to win one of the great prizes that are supplied by a number of the different creatives. Uh, I'm offering up a prize as part of that prize pool. So I think that's everything. If I've forgotten anything, do head down to the description box because that's where you'll find all the information. So for my project today, uh, I'm working with gingerbread. My prompt, each of us had a prompt, and my prompt and my partner, who's also bringing a video today, the prompt was bringing gingerbread to life. It made me scratch my head for a little bit, and I thought, well, obviously gingerbread and life, gingerbread people kind of was where my head stuck at. So I've made up this little freebie for you. Please do go ahead to my Buy Me A Coffee page. Again, the link is in the description box. And download it. It will be in the gallery. So the link will take you to the posts of my Buy Me A Coffee page. And then if you click on the gallery tab, then you'll find this printable. And a bunch of other freebies there as well, which you're more than welcome to grab while you're there. You don't need to buy me a coffee. It's completely free. But if you want to buy me a coffee... Feel, feel free. I won't say no. <laughs> Just a little plug there. Okay, so this is the free printable uh, to go with my project. We've got a little gingerbread boy and a little gingerbread girl. Uh, so what I've done with those is I've loosely cut out around each of them, not, not right against the line, just loosely out, and then glued it to a bit of cardstock. So for the boy, I glued it to some cardboard packaging it's actually a cat food box and I glued the paper onto the patterned side and then I cut around the actual line so you don't cut it twice just cut it loosely glue it on and then cut round and then for the girl I glued her so this one was before I added the coffee dyed paper in behind because I thought well it gives more options if it's coloured that's why. So I did this one as a test run and then I added the coffee dyed. So the little girl here, I backed onto some scrapbooking card. So it's not as heavy as the cat food box, but it's reasonably heavy. 
So once you've got your templates, we're going to use the templates, but after you've finished with them, if you don't want to make any more or um, you could pop them away for another year, pop them in your template stash um, or turn them into something else. Even if you're not into Christmas, you could make these as little people. They don't have to be gingerbread. So you could just use them as people. But if you don't want to keep them and use them, then you can actually just decorate them up and use them as a piece of ephemera to go in a journal. This one's a bit marked, but you could cover it in paper and be all good to go. So just a bit of thought about when you're making your templates as to whether you would like to keep them, in which case it doesn't really matter what they're backed with, um, just something sturdy, or whether you want to actually use it as a piece of ephemera once you've finished making what we're going to make today. Okay? I hope that's clear. I feel like I'm rattling off at a million miles. Okay. Let's get to business. You will need, for this project, three sheets of paper. Okay, I've chosen out three that I like together. So I've gone with this poinsettia one, this deer one, and this bird and church one. I think they all work. And I've backed them with a writing, sort of writable background, if you like, like so. Okay. You could print them onto coffee dyed paper and not double print them like I have or you could just do them on white, just whatever you prefer. Okay, So we're going to take our first sheet. When you're um, printing them off, if you're not borderless then trim off the white on the, the small ends, the narrow ends, but don't worry about the top and bottom, it won't matter. Just the edges on the side of each of your pages and then we're good to go so first off I'm going to turn it to the wrong side and grab my glue wherever I've put it and we're going to glue these together just along the edges and make a big long piece and don't overlap them by too much you just want a narrow overlap I'm just using tacky glue because it's quick and easy and mess free basically. Just line of glue and then line it up on your paper. I'm overlapping by around a centimetre. Give or take, it's not super critical. Um, in fact that's probably less than a centimetre yeah it's about 7 millimetres or um, around a quarter of an inch ok so there's that one and then grab the next one and do the same making sure all your fronts are the right way up you want all your fronts facing the same way and all your backs facing the same way. As I'm my very first one that I tried, I ended up growing them different ways, and it was like, well, that doesn't work. So I had to scrap that and try again, and my next one worked fine. So I'm just trying to keep them straightish. But again, it's not going to matter too much if they're not perfectly straight. Okay, that's that stage done. Easy enough so far, I hope. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to be working with the girl because I've already done a prototype with the gingerbread boy. Um, so I will show him as we get further down the track. Right, now I've got to think about this. Uh, I've got to think which way I did it. Okay. okay, so this end is actually going to be your front, okay, so I'm going to somehow juggle this, I need to move some things because I haven't got a lot of room here, hopefully I don't bump the camera, but if I do, please forgive it. Okay, you want to lay your template on, 
and make sure that the arm and the skirt overlap I think they should both overlap okay they don't look no they're not quite straight so maybe just the arms um, with the boy the the both meet so the arms and the legs meet at the same point I tried to make the girl meet with the skirt and the arms but obviously I didn't quite do that so just make sure the arm is overhanging by a little bit hopefully you can see that um, I don't if we angled the skirt so it overlapped then we're going to end up running out of paper so just do the arms okay and pull up your paper to the arm where the arm the other arm is and just give it a little light crease like so but that's not where we're going to fold it because we need to bring it in a little bit so that this arm also overlaps a bit i hope you know where i'm going with this it'll come clear actually is this the front maybe it's the back doesn't matter it actually doesn't matter Thing it is the front so where we made that mark just bring it back a little bit from that crease so it's a little bit narrower than where you creased and before you go ahead and crease it like I just creased it you probably want to fold it and then check and make sure yes we overhang and actually we managed to get a slight overhang on the skirt as well so yeah it's going to work fine okay so from there you just need to concertina your papers backwards and forwards trying to keep the edges fairly even a little bit of difference here and there is not going to hurt but just try and keep it you know relatively within the same fold lines I wonder who of you out there is guessing what I'm making. Um, I don't actually know what they're called. So maybe you can provide me the name if you know what I'm doing. Because we used to make them as children. Um, but I don't know. Are they called concertina dolls? Or I don't know. I haven't made one for so long. Right. So I am going a little off kilter. But not so bad that it should be a problem. backwards and forwards you don't want to grow it past past your original otherwise you're going to end up with losing your linkage on the hands if we lose it on the skirt that's okay as long as there's still one point of contact which will be the arms because that's the widest point on the template okay and one more fold Oops. no that's okay we are all good so now you should have a number of folds all there like so so we've got a decorative side and we've got a writable side sorry I'm just double thinking myself I've only made one and it was a couple of days ago when I made it so I'm just checking that I've I'm making sense and know what I'm doing so we can now bring our template on and bring it down fairly close to the bottom but avoiding that white line because that's going to be chopped off which is why we didn't need to do it ahead of time bring it as far down as comfortable avoiding the white and that will give you bits up the top that are great scraps to use for collaging or whatever so we're going to take our template line it up with overhang making sure it overhangs both sides and take a pencil and just trace around your template like so I'm really happy that that skirt ended up overhanging because I was hoping it would I thought I'd made a mistake and it was like, oh well, we'll just go with it. But no, as it happens, 
is going to be fine. So I hope you're all enjoying the collab. I am. It's, it's a blast so far. So many great ideas. So many wonderful uh, tutorials and ideas and inspiration flowing. I'm just going to trim off that bit there at the back because that overhang we don't need. And I could just cut it off when I'm cutting the rest, but I'd rather have a nice strip that we can use for something else. So just remove that. Okay, now the trickiest bit is cutting it out because you want to hold it fairly firmly so that it doesn't shift and you get a nice even line up of layers rather than it's staggered um, which is possible my prototype went relatively well so I'm hoping this one does as well so I'm just going to start here and follow my pencil line it's not too thick to cut through I find it's reasonably okay you could always choose to do less pages if you don't want so many pages it's entirely up to you there's lots of ways you can customize this if you choose but just take the idea and run with it and see where you end up and if you'd like to share what you make then I know everybody over in the uh, Rachel and Bella crafts Facebook group would love to see what you're doing with the various prompts and ideas because it gives us all uh, a thrill when we see people joining in and making along it's very encouraging for us all okay so just carefully cutting around here we go there's the first bit you can see the shape coming out and then go in here so this is where our edge of our skirt is so we want to leave that make sure we don't chop that off and cut in the next section this section between the skirt or the legs of the gingerbread boy and the arms actually makes some really cool little scraps almost like bauble shape which is kind of fun so keep those because you might want to decorate something up with like a row of um, baubles. I'll show you actually. I'll grab one out. You know that sort of shape. I think that would be fun if you, you like edged it, put a string on it. it would make a fun little bauble to decorate something with a page or a journal card or a Christmas card if you're making Christmas cards. I think that would be fun. And we get some on the other side too. So you get two lots. Fun scraps. Okay. Now the top bit around the head. I'm just going quite slowly because, you know, it's not just a couple of layers. And I don't want the paper to move too much on me. If you get to a certain point like this, it can be easier just to chop it. So there we've got some, you know, decent bits there we can use. Going around. I don't know what my uh, video partner's doing for this prompt, so I'll be interested to see that. Um, Wendy's Journal Adventures I think is the name of the channel I forgot to double check before I started the video so if I've got that wrong I apologize to my partner if I've got it right well yay <laughs> as I said at the beginning uh, look in the description box for the link tree and you'll find all the information now it can be a little tricky at these points just to get in there so coming in from both sides is very helpful and in from the back as well. Just because it comes to that sort of sharp little point in there. There we go. One more bit to go which is our other 
oh I didn't finish doing around the around the arm better do that need to have one arm bigger than the other or she would okay this other side where the the other baubles Christmas balls will come out from right now on these I do prefer to ink all the edges but I'm not going to do that on camera so we'll just imagine that I've done it um, I will do that after I've finished recording because I've done it on the gingerbread boy so you'll see with the effect of it there if you're not an anchor you don't have to ink but I like to ink Right, so we've finished with our template for now. Just clear off all those scraps of paper off my desk. Okay, so here we go. We have, ta-da! Our little gingerbread girls. And then the other side, which we can write on. Opens out. And look at all that writing space. Isn't that fun? I just think it's fun. Yes, it's a little bit of work to get there. But it's not something you would do all the time, is it? It's, it's festive fun. You could do it as a person, just a regular person, and decorate it up as a regular person. Not a gingerbread or a Christmas person. Um, so you could do it anytime you like, but it's just a fun, interactive thing. Okay. So I'm going to leave her there for a moment. Um, you can decide which way you want it to open. So either this way, or if you go on this side, then it will open this way. So it will impact which way you glue your pages together, which one is on top. But I think any of the papers are actually gorgeous, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now let's take a look at my prototype. This is my little gingerbread boy, all decorated up. So I made him a little vest and some buttons, and they are all cut from different pages in the kit. The only thing I cut from something outside of the kit was the mouth, which I used a hole punch, a single hole punch, to cut from some red cardstock. Some googly eyes, so there's a bit of fun. Can you hear that? Fun sound, fun movement, bulky, so it's not something you want permanently in your journal. It needs to be something that you can remove, okay? And then I did a little hat out of some paper, same paper as the buttons, and then I just added some um, liquid pearls along the sleeves and the hat just for fun. So you could dress it up however you like. And then on this one, I used these papers from the kit. So blue Christmas trees, snowflakes, and this Christmas tree one. And on this one, because it was my prototype, I didn't back it. I didn't back the pages, so they're just white. So I just inked around and thought that's fine. You know, so lots of writing space still. So we're going to now make somewhere for him to live. We are. So I've got here a bit of sheet music, which is going to be a journal page. I've done some of this ahead of time because there's some things that you'll either know how to do already, or you can find out how to do it. I've got videos on it. Everybody, well not everybody, but a lot of people have videos on how to make just a gusseted pocket that will fit your little gingerbread boy. So gusset, because he's... You know, there's a bit of thickness there. You want something that will accommodate the thickness. So he's going to go in that pocket there. So when you're writing on the pages in and around, you can remove him so the eyes aren't going to be an issue. So that's going to go there. And he's going to live in that wee pocket, which is another bit of the kit page. One of the kit pages, which I just added a little bit of doily to. And we're going to make a kind of a door a flip up door so like this is a gingerbread house and who lives inside the house but our gingerbread boy you think that's fun i think it's fun 
Uh, so this is one of the beautiful main journal pages from the Timeless Christmas collection. And then I've backed it with another page from the same collection, um, just that provides a bit more writing ability and actually matches the background as well. So we're going to do a little flip up kind of house for our little fellow there. So I need to cut this down. Oops, don't cut myself on the blade, would be good. So I need to cut it down basically to the house itself. So we are going to lose most of the tree. Uh, but it's a digital, so we can print it again and use the tree on something else. I just think it's a cool idea to use the gingerbread house because it's like the house. Where else does a gingerbread boy live but in a gingerbread house? Right, so we've got that edge. And, oh, actually we might, we can, we can leave the tree. We can leave the tree there because it fits on the page. Beautiful. Awesome. I thought I was going to have to lose quite a bit of this, but we don't. How cool is that? Okay. So I'm not going to glue this down yet because I want to make sure that it's hidden by our flap. I don't want to glue this down and then find it's like poking out the side or something. Oops, there's a little bit of doily just sticking up there. Let's take care of that. I hope you're following along okay with this, that I'm being clear enough. Please don't be afraid to ask any questions if there's anything that I didn't explain very well or that you're not sure on, and I'll be happy to answer. Um, I'm going to round the corners on this just because I feel like it. You don't have to. You could give them the snip. A little snip with your scissors would be fine too. Or you could leave it square. Whatever your preference is. Um, now before I ink, I want to do a little hinge at the top. That will be our flap. So it will flip up. Just give that a crease. And I'm just going to angle the top corners here. Just so they don't show. Out the sides. There you go. That's going to attach to the top of our page. Oh, isn't it just absolutely gorgeous, stunning papers. Just love every part of this kit. And I would love to do a journal with the thing, with the whole lot. Um, probably not going to be this year though, because I am just a bit slammed at the moment. I've got a lot going on, so we will just have to wait. Okay, and let's do this side as well. If you haven't grabbed this kit, um, you know, you don't have to buy all the bits. If there's just a bit that you want, do go and check out either their Kofi page or Etsy store. That's Rachel and Bella Crafts. Because um, you could just buy a bit of it, but it is all on sale at the moment. Um, so it's a great time to grab it during the collaboration. Yes. Okay, so let's glue that down. Come on, glue. There we go. I'm hoping this uh, sheet music holds up because it's very old book and very thin. Well, not ultra thin, but quite thin paper. In the combination, I see I've, there's already a little tear up here, so I might have to go in with some washi or something. So hopefully it will hold up to what I'm going to be putting it through. It is a Christmas song too, the sheet music I've chosen out. Um, the Star of Bethlehem, but I didn't want to cover over the title. Okay, so that's going to flip up and we're going to have writing space all up here. So what we're doing is we're taking a page that 
normally you would not have really be able to write on it and we're adding so much writing space so now let's work out where we want our pocket so think about their works let's test that our gingerbread whoops gingerbread boy fits in there let me don't crash his head on no he fits in nicely so i'm just gonna do a little pencil mark just just a subtle little one on either side there so i know where i'm putting it to let's glue this down don't know how long I've been filming I should probably check the time make sure I'm not going too long I don't want to make it too long for you guys because there's a lot of videos to come two people a day and then towards the end of the month there's I think a couple of days where there's three people so you've got a lot of watching to do and a lot of making to do if you want to make you don't have to make you can just follow along and enjoy that's great too we don't mind that at all uh, but conscious that you know it's a lot for people to to do to fit into their time to their day so I want to try and keep this to a reasonable length for you okay there we go and I'd probably further decorate this up but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to extend the video we just and we can put our little gingerbread boy into his little pocket there and then he's hidden behind his gingerbread house so it's a little bulky but that's why it's important to make him removable so that you're not struggling in your journal to write over top of him gingerbread house gingerbread boy <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just tickled with my own uh, own creation it's not a bad thing is it tell me it's not okay so for this little girl um how are we going on time oh we're, we're doing well we're actually doing well so that's fine so i will show you how i do the clothing okay so for this little girl i am going to use green green dots and i'm just going to start i'm actually going to do on the back by tracing around our template I'm not going to do the head because I'm not going to cover her head like with a veil and I will do the legs just so I know where they are if you know what I mean and around there and there okay so we've traced around now i'm just going to loosely cut around it so it's easier to work with see if i'd drawn around her head i would have just chopped it off okay i just need to grab out this off cut as well for the next stage after this okay so i'm going to trim around this on the pencil line as much as I can and just take it go up a little into the neck because you don't want to go too far down and end up with issues we'll be dealing with that once we've cut the whole thing out I'm very quiet haven't I I'm concentrating and I should be probably be using my fussy cutting scissors rather than my big scissors but you mind if this is working it's not too fine and there's not a lot of details so big scissors are fine Christmas is coming so quickly like you 
I was thinking, oh gosh, it's so early to be thinking about Christmas. But uh-uh, we're in November, people. Like Christmas is next month. And so if you are crafting for Christmas, it does pay to, to be ahead, to work ahead. Because that time just fills up so quickly. Especially once you hit the, um, you know, December proper where you start having various family events or work events, uh, social events. You know, the, oh, at least here in New Zealand, there's always people going out for end of year celebrations and Christmas do's and all that sort of thing. So that kind of eats up your crafting time. I know it does mine. So it does pay to be ahead because crafting takes time and you don't want to rush it. Rushing's not much fun. It's good to slow down and enjoy the process. Right, here we go. So, finish with our template again for the moment. So I'm just going to line it up and check that we're all good okay so i'm gonna okay it's got one little issue there and that we've got a little divot for between the legs which is actually okay because i've got an idea going to take my hole punch, my single hole punch, and I'm just going to make periodic divots along the edge like a little ruffle. This is called thinking on the fly and how to fix a little issue because I should have taken that point down around rather than gone up. Um, so we're just going to fix it going to make it look like it's exactly how we want it and I need to do that one a little bit deeper like so just take little snips whoops get close to that one never mind the blind man would be pleased to see it here we go and we've given her a little frilly bottom to her skirt there cute cute okay so now what i like to do is fold it loosely in half match up the arms and i just want to think how i want to do this which angle i want so i think i'm gonna pretty much go vertical doesn't really matter so that's going to give us our sleeves see that so she's got her arms poking out. So that's the sleeves. <clears throat> Please excuse me. I've gone a bit froggy. Okay. Folding it back again. And we're going to deal with that neckline. So we're going to. You can choose to give a V neckline. A scoop neckline. Whatever you would like to give her dress. Um, I might give a little curve. Like so, and just testing it. Oh, I've got a pencil line there. Let's just get rid of that pencil line. So we've got a little scoop neckline there. And on the boy, I also gave him a little waistcoat bottom, if you like, a wee shirt bottom here. And I did the same thing. I just cut down and then I cut up to a point to create these little points here. Hopefully that makes sense. Just play around maybe with scrap paper and design yourself some clothes. And then this hat, I did the same thing. I just folded it a bit in half and drew out a design, cut it out and glued it on. So do I want to make any other features on the dress? Do I? No, I think that's fine. I think we're going to just go with that. Um, do I want to ink it? 
now would be the time if you do want to ink it because once it's glued down you won't be able to get the neckline or things like that um, no I'm, I'm not going to ink it so just glue it on just taking care to line it up as best you can All those little points that I created with whoops gluing my fingers not so helpful all those little points I just created let's get glue into those let's whizzle some glue around in there and line up your clothing with your little girl or your little boy whichever one you're making and then come in and trim off any overhang that you might have because we've got an overlap so our skirt doesn't go all the way out like our template does so you will have a little bit of overlap in places trim it off A little bit there okay there we go so for my eyes I use googly eyes but you don't have to you could draw some on paint some on you could cut out some paper use a hole punch to create some eyes um, I wasn't going to use googly eyes on her but I've changed my mind. I think I am going to because I think they're just a bit of fun and not something I use a lot of. And I bought a big packet of them just so I could do this project. So let's just go ahead and use googly eyes on her. Oops, just a little tricky getting in that curve with the big scissors, but we got there. So I've got, I've got all these, like I need to use them on something. So I'm going to use double sided tape. So let's grab out a couple. These are one centimetre little googly eyes. So I think that was around quarter of an inch, was it? Uh, no, three eighths. Uh, Three eighths, three eighths of an inch is the size I'm using. So I'm just going to rip off a couple of little pieces of double sided tape and I'll show you a little trick for. Oh, that's all. That wasn't ideal. It's all right, it'll still work. So, how to deal with the overhang and this one. There we go. So I need a scrap bit of paper. So I'm just going to use one of the scraps from cutting out the dress. And I'm going to just attach that to my bit of paper, the overhang, and peel off the backing like so. And then just going to run around the edges, pushing the excess tape onto the back of the eye. And I should be able to remove that paper. Well, when I did it the other day, it worked fine. But if not, you can just trim that bit off. I prefer this method than just cutting the tape because you get into all sorts of sticky mess then. And then just work out where you want your eye to sit. I'm just going to go there. And then I'll do the same thing with this eye. Putting it on the paper just helps you peel the backing off, otherwise it's really tough to try and get the backing off when the tape isn't stuck to anything. Okay. I'll just leave that on for now while I'm pushing the tape onto the back of the eye so it's not sticking out it's not going to cause a problem. Sticking to everything that you don't want it stuck to. Okay. and then I'm just going to 
not going to bother trying to keep it off. I'm just going to cut it. There we go. And eyeballing. <laughs> eyeballing. Sorry. <laughs> As I was saying, it was like, oh, that's so punny. Okay. And let's go there. That looks about right. And then I just take my hole punch and let's see if I can find the bit of paper I used. Ooh, where's it gone? I've lost it. Oh no, I've lost the bit of paper. Oh gosh, sorry. Bear with me, guys. Ah, oh, there it is. This one printed with a black background, and I don't actually know that it's supposed to be black. Um, I'm not sure. I have a feeling that my printer printed did something funny and lost one of the colours when it was printing or something. Maybe it's supposed to be black, but... I haven't gone back and checked the digital file, but I was quite surprised. I've got a little nose. So just again with the tacky glue because it's quick and easy. And mess free. I'm trying to imagine gluing that with a glue stick. Like you could have such sticky fingers. So we've got a wee nose and then where did I put my card? I had a bit of red cardstock for the mouth. Oh, there we go. So, see where I did the took the boy's mouth from? And I did five. So let's try five again. One, two, three, four, five. Um, you don't you need to use cardstock. Whoops. All the little scraps. Um... You could use paper, you could use a bit of the digital kit, um, whatever you would like. Okay, so I'm going to do a different home for her than I did with the boy. And let's just glue these on. I'm just, with the boy I laid them out and made sure I had them in the pattern that I wanted. For the benefit of time, I'm just going to wing this and hope that they end up in the right place and looking okay we're almost there we're, we're coming to the end we just need to make her little oops I don't want it up there that would be a really weird face wouldn't it and you could add extra things you could add little cheek highlights you could add hair um, a hat like I did with the boy you could add some jewelry you could add edges on the sleeves and on the bottom of the dress like you could decorate it up so many ways I can see a few little places that I need to trim up but I think it's okay for now just so you get the idea and that I'm not spending a lot of time doing too much fiddling Right, so there's our mouth. We've got a face. We're bringing our gingerbread to life. I hope that's um, meeting the prompt, that you can see how I'm achieving the prompt and bringing gingerbread to life. Okay, so for her, I want her to be mounted on a piece of ephemera that we can remove. So a journal card, essentially. And I'm just going to use this bit. Uh, it's already got the backing on it that we did for the flip for our guy, for our boy. Um, so I need to trim down this piece. So I just need to double check. Yeah, so if I go somewhere on the edge of this bauble, we should be okay. Oops, over a bit, over a bit, there we go. 
So it's going to be a nice big journal card. Go in a nice big pocket. And do we want to trim down a little bit? I think I might trim the, bot the top a little bit. Because I like that the bottom is less busy because we've already got a lot going on with our girl. Let's take that off at the top. And that's a look at that beautiful strip. Isn't that gorgeous? Definitely be using that somewhere. Okay. So we've got our little girl here. She needs a bit of extra decorating. She definitely needs inking up. I might do some hair for her or something. I'm not sure, but I'll work that one out later off camera. So just round the head just so you can kind of see. Now, for the final step for the girl, is I've got some ribbon here that is just like driving me nuts because it won't stay on the roll. And I've chosen out green. And I'm going to just cut a length. Oops, I've got the scissors all sticky now. Cut a length. Let's go about there. It might be too long, but I'd rather go too long at this stage. And this is a one-sided ribbon, so I want to actually... Which side? I want to actually glue the good side down. I want to position it, so I'm just going to make a little mark about where I want it. Want it along that line. So I'm just going to use my tacky glue. position it about there so around her waist is where you want it I'm just going to go in and remove that pencil mark oops while well, the glue's doing its thing there we go it's a little bit sticky so I don't want to put her down on top of that yet and risk gluing her in place you could actually glue her in place if you wanted but I would I thinking I would like this still be used for writing so the idea is that she can still be removed from this and then you can still write on the front and back right I think it's lost its stick so there we go so to attach her to the journal card we just then tie her on and a little belt around her waist Fingers and thumbs when I do this on camera. Yep. Okay, I need to work on my bow tying skills. But. Because that, it's not the normal way I do it. I try and do it the way that Gail Agostinelli um, shows. By doing the up and over the different way but it doesn't seem to work for me I don't know I think I'm doing it wrong I need to go back and re-watch I've watched her do it so many times but I always seem to end up in a muddle and not be able to grab the bits I think that's fine though so there she's tied on to the journal card and you can pop that in a pocket and remove it and she makes some noise so there we go my friends that is my project for the day for the collab so we've got our two little gingerbread people and two ways to use them in your journal so in a little pocket with a little house flip or on a journal card where she is removable so open her up remove her right on this and right inside her and then you can tie her back in place it's a bit like 
keeping her captive, isn't it, really? But it's not. You're just dressing her up. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this idea. I hope you're enjoying the collaboration. I thank Rachel so, so much for having me along. I am on the design team for Rachel Miller Crafts. Uh, thoroughly enjoying using these beautiful digitals. So go forth, enjoy the rest of the collab, take care and hopefully I'll see you back for another video. Bye for now.